is Benedict still the Pope? Or is there a set of Aganti now? The Catholic Doctrine of Limbo and Catholic Astrology. All that and more on the Guild Family Stream. <music> Brethren in Christ, Laude to Jesus Christus in Secula. Happy Epiphany. It's a great day today at the Flanders household. I have not yet made the wassail. I was really excited because I love wassail, wassail, whatever you want to call it. And I just discovered that 12th night, the 12th night tradition is wassail. So I bought all the stuff to make the wassail. And I'm going to serve it to, we've got some Meaning of Catholic members coming to visit the Flanders Fortress tonight. So we're going to have an in-person epiphany celebration tomorrow um, with one of my favorite epiphany traditions, my other one. Um, and so I don't have that yet, but I'm, I'm just running like a head, like a chicken with its head cut off today. Um, I'm sorry. I'm so late with this guild stream because, uh, I had to push out this breaking news story. <sighs> uh, I hate breaking news cause it always messes up my plans for the day, you know? So, um, but, uh, go over one of your five. If you want to learn about what is so breaking, um, but uh, let's look at what we're going to talk about today. All of your questions. If you're new to the Guild, thanks for being a Guild member. Your support helps the Flanders family pay our bills and feed the mouths that we have to feed. Um, and it also supports our writers and our volunteers and the whole organization. So appreciate your support. And this, the Guild family stream, is just a, um, it's just a conversation. Uh, open conversation, chat in at any time. Uh, if you're new, introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, where you're at, where do you live? Um, and um, so just an open conversation, anything you want to talk about throughout this whole thing. I'll try to try to, I want to get to everything, God willing, just as I know I've been, I've been on retreat, uh, retreat from my phone totally for the octave of Christmas and this week has just been transitioning back into all the work and all the Vatican drama. Um, so uh, Richards, what's up, Richard? He says, how do you spell that? I am I think I think it's W-A-S-S-A-I-L. Uh, probably comes from one of the various Celtic um, uh, Celtic uh, languages in the British Isles. Corey says, where has Palocrat been? Well, I have good news for you. Bad news, I'm sorry paleocrat has been gone, but the good news is he's been working very, very hard on his book. It's almost done. We're like this close to getting it published. It's probably going to be next week, God willing. Um, definitely by Septuagesima. I think that's. I think we can both promise that. And you know what? It's providential. Paleo, I didn't even mention this to him, but it's providential because it'll... it'll uh, what we should do is we should publish it on the Feast of St. Francis de Sales. I remember... Because I, well, I'll have to ca connect with him about this because, you know, St. Francis de Sales was instrumental in his conversion and his whole life. He's a huge fan of St. Francis, as am I, but more so him. And he's also the patron of uh, journalists, I think, some kind of writing or whatever. So, um, so uh, where are we? Let's let's talk about here, here's what we're going to cover. So like what we've been doing, the first little bit of this is going to be a public for anybody to watch on the YouTube channel. Uh, but the rest, if you want all of this content, you do have to become a guild member. So you have to go to patreon.com slash meaning of Catholic, or you can also donate one time donation. And as always, if you can't afford it, feel free to contact me to get free access. Also, I should also mention, I should remember to mention this too, because we have guild members who have to quit financially. You know, they, that financial situation changes and all that. You know, I understand that you got to quit your subscription and whatever. But if you ever need to do that, you can also still get free access. So this is a guild, obviously. So this is for us to support one another. Um, and so it's obviously, you know, want to help people who have financial difficulties and still give them the content. Anyways. All right. So here's what we have to do. I'm going to get on a soapbox about uh, what's what's gone on about what the Sedes and the Beneplanists I'm going to get on a soapbox because I, I've been rather aggravated by some of the goings on since uh, Pope Benedict 
um, <laughs> passed on. Um, and we're going to have some celebrations of uh, tribute to Benedict. Um, I certainly love Benedict. I, I loved him. Uh, I more the more I read him, the more I appreciate his 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 wisdom and his 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 theolo theologizing and everything. Uh, hello, Mungo. What's up? Um, and so we'll talk. I, I'm going to get up on a soapbox, and uh, I don't usually do that, but I will. Uh, then we'll talk about how Jesus intervenes in the post Tridentine hypertomism with the heart. We'll talk about Catholic astrology. Uh, we'll talk about Epiphany, of course. We'll talk more about it tomorrow, too. There's an, and there's also a special Epiphany announcement that I have. Um, is Adam in heaven? What is the Catholic doctrine of limbo? How do you talk about that with um, people, which is sometimes a difficult subject? Um, can non-Catholics have effective prayer? Did the apostles receive communion in the hand? Okay, let's get to it. So the first part of this, I just want to say publicly, um, first point, the Sedes and the Beni Plenis, a.k.a. B.I.P., should be treated as separated brethren at worst. Uh, I, I think it's rather unfortunate that it seems that there is this, this is what meaning of Catholic is all about. It's all about giving, bringing people together to dis debate and discuss things that are disputed and to emphasize the fact that we, as Catholics, we have certain essentials that bind us together. And at worst, BIP people are separated brethren at, at the very worst. Now let's just review some basics uh, from your, from your catechism here, because unfortunately this is something that's very little understood by Catholics today. People think that the Pope is the church and the church is the Pope. That's not true. That's false. That's not true. That's not Catholic. Here's, here's what it means to be Catholic. Okay. According to Bellarmine. Summarizing the Catholic tradition. In order of importance here, number one is the Catholic faith. If you don't have the Catholic faith, that's it. That's why we have the Nicene Creed. In the Nicene Creed, it doesn't say, I believe in the Pope. Why not? It should be so essential. No, it's not. It's not as essential as the faith. It is essential, and I'll get to that, but it's not as essential as the faith. The faith is number one, faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, when our Lord said, upon this rock, I will build my church, it was at the confession of Peter. Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. That is his faith. That's one aspect of the rock. One aspect upon the rock which the church is founded. The rock is the faith in Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the real rock. He's the rock. You have to have faith in Jesus Christ and in his true faith, his Catholic faith, in order to have be Catholic at all. Uh, now, secondly, and and number two and three are, are sort of joined together. But upon this rock, I will build my church is secondarily the person of Peter. It's both. The Eastern Orthodox want to say, oh, it's only the faith because there are fathers who say that. There is a tradition that says that and it's true. But they want to use that to deny that it also means the person of Peter, i.e. the Pope. Uh, which the tradition also says that. It's both. Just as so many different passages in the scripture have multiple depths of meaning, so too this common passage. It means the faith of Peter and the person of Peter, because you can't have faith unless you are you have a person confessing that faith. They go hand in hand. Um, and this ties into number two, because it's ultimately a communion with Jesus Christ, who has a body. Jesus Christ has a body. We're not Protestants. We don't have me and Jesus church. That's not a church. That's your private cult. The church is the body of Christ. Founded, as St. Paul says, upon the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. There we have the rock. Jesus Christ is the rock, the per se, the rock. And he has a body. We have to have, in order to have communion with Christ, we have to have communion with his body. That means, first and foremost, your local bishop. That's the first Catholic bishop that you need to be concerned about being in communion with because, as the fathers say, as going back to St. Ignatius of Antioch, 
where the bishop is, there is the Catholic Church. Now, that's the most important thing because the local bishop is the Eucharistic Assembly. Now, there is a third factor, however, which is this, again, order of priority here. In order to be Catholic, that bishop has to have the faith and he has to be in communion with the See of Rome. Because the See of Rome is the guarantee of the unity of the body of Christ, the guarantee of the Orthodox faith, all sorts of et cetera, et cetera. But this is one, two, three. So there is a priority here for the faith. Everybody is subordinated to the faith. The bishops, priests, the pope. The pope's job is to guard the faith. And we have communion in communio in sacri. So the church is a communion. So one of the aspects of this what that I want to emphasize here is that the church is the mystical body of Christ, which is manifested, practically speaking, in communio in sacris. In other words, communion manifests the church. Again, we're not Protestants. We don't believe in a sort of invisible church in, in the sense of that the church is just invisible because you can go and commune at the blessed sacrament, at the, at the altar, one faith, one Lord, but in baptism. St. Paul says to the Hebrews, we have an altar. We have an altar, which those who serve the Levites are not worthy to eat. Or as he says again, in another place to the, to the Corinthians, the bread that we break, is it not the communion with the body of Christ, the kinonia? The church is the kinonia in the body of Christ. And so if you don't have communion, in the altar, you are not in the church, at least in a formal sense. One could be, there are exceptions to that. There are invisible members of the church, uh, you know, baptism of desire, that sort of thing. That can, that can happen, okay? But ordinarily speaking, if you are uh, in communion with the church, you are in the church, period. That, that's the end of it. Because number three can get messy, the whole organization of the, the subordination to the hierarchy can become messy. Someone can, uh, d d if you disobey a hierarchical uh, command, are you not in the church? If you find yourself in an irregular situation, are you not in the church because you're not a part of this, her this hierarchical subordination? Yes or no. Perhaps, perhaps not. Communion is the main factor here. We don't say that the Eastern Orthodox are part of the church because they're not in communion with us. That's the key factor. The church is a communion. And the, that is why if, if one finds oneself in a some sort of difficult situation in terms of the hierarchy, that does not make one not Catholic. You're not not Catholic uh, if you are the, the that's because this is the the third priority. Obviously, it's a priority. I'm not saying we should go around and disobey people and just cause chaos. But the pro the thing is that all of these things are subordinated to the faith, to communion. All of those things are means to that end. And that's why the subordination to the hierarchy can be set aside if it is for the sake of the faith. As St. Thomas says in the famous passage where Paul rebuked St. Peter. So, how does, what does it have to do with Sedes and Betty Planis? I mean, I'm not going to discuss much of the Sedes, but the, the point is that there is, a, there is this sort of sense after Benedict died where people say, well, if you have good faith doubts, you know, if you have any doubt whatsoever about P Pope Francis's papacy, and you're honestly doubting that, and you think maybe, maybe Benedict is Pope. Maybe he just died, and the Pope died, and now there's, you know, they need to elect a new Pope. I, I am having, I'm having an honest doubt. I have a good faith doubt about that. Well, guess what? There was a thing called the Western Great Schism, where literally half of Christendom believed in an anti-Pope. Did the Church stop working at that time? No, it didn't, because number three can get messy. That doesn't mean you're not Catholic. doesn't mean you're not in the church. In fact, these two sides of Christendom actually excommunicated each other. So they were actually not even in communion with each other. But 
in reality, they were sort of historic his, hindsight. We say that they were in communion because eventually this was worked out. Um, but I, I don't like, I don't agree with many planism. Obviously I've discussed this with Edmund Mazza, my friend on meaning of Catholic. You can go look that up is Benedict the Pope. We had a long discussion about it, but the beginning of that discussion, I tried to explain why is this different than set of contism? at least in my mind, according to Maza's hypothesis, which is slightly different than other BIP people, as I understand it. The issue is that, you know, why don't we why don't we apply Vatican II consistently for the SSPX, the SETAs, and the BIP? In other words, should we not have charity towards these fellow Catholics or like adjacent separated brethren Catholics who are very close to us? If if they could be said to be outside the church, they're very they're the closest to the church of any non-Catholics if they are not Catholic. And I'm not saying they are not Catholic, especially not the SSPX. And I would certainly say the same for the BIP. Um, you know, as I said with my friend Edmund Maza, he remains in communion with Pope Francis. He goes to his local parish that commemorates Pope Francis. So he's in communion with Pope Francis, even though he publicly expresses his good faith doubts about his pontificate. That's a totally different situation than a sede who judges of him his own authority about all these disputed questions and then goes, sets up his own altar and commemorates who knows who, who Pope Michael or Pope Michael's successor or whatever. Pope Michael, in fact, repented at the end of end of his days, as as was reported. Um, so I, I just don't like people being treated without charity. It it just it is. It, it, you know, the, here's the bottom line. If you don't have charity, you're not Catholic. That's the, that's the biggest thing because he who loveth not knoweth not God for God is charity. He who loveth not knoweth not God period for God is charity. And I, I just don't like the way that people are being treated because people are you know, people have eyes of doubts that we're in a situation we're in a difficult situation. Let's just cut each other some pl slack. You know, as long as we're, uh, as long as we are really striving to be faithful Catholics and we're not trying to create an enthusiastic cult, as I think some said, I seem to do, don't want to judge them harshly, but it seems to be the case, but who am I to judge? God is their judge. I'm not, I'm not convinced by their theories. Um, Primarily because they deny the validity of the new sacraments. They believe that, uh, you know, sedes, I'm talking about sedes now, as I said before, the, the main issue, as far as I can tell, is not the hypothesis that the Pope can lose his office due to heresy. That's a hypothesis that has been uh, promoted by great saints, Bellarmine, you know. Uh, that's not necessarily the problem. The problem is, one, they take it upon themselves to judge this. Because in reality, it's a disputed question. You can't really just take it upon yourself to dis to judge a disputed question. You're not a theologian. You're not the magisterium. Don't judge. It's not your it's not your call. It's not your place. And two, I think this is the bigger thing to me is that they deny the validity of the new sacraments. So, in other words, the entire church has been dis deprived of sacramental grace. So how how can you believe that the <laughs> the gates of hell have not uh, you know overcome if the entire reason for the church to exist, which is con to confer sacramental grace and save souls, has been destroyed? According to you, I find that to be completely ridiculous. Um, and well, anything I've ever read, I just I just had Anthony um, shared with me some objection by some sede where he was just completely misreading benedict and just reading into him a bunch of heresy that wasn't really there as far as i can tell and I, I just find all of their arguments to be rather obtuse lacking nuance lacking a, a fuller study of the tradition and uh it's just it's just dangerous enthusiastic cult but i will still cut them some slack hey i i, I mean are they trying to be faithful catholics probably most of them they're just probably just trying to do their best here because we're in a situation like this. Okay. So let's, I mean, I'm even going to cut the set and slack here. So let's just try our best to work out our salvation and help each other as best we can here. Um, I think the main thing is that 
um, it is not your place to label fellow Catholics on questions which are questiones disputate. It's not your place. None of us, I'm not, I'm a layman. I'm not a theologian. It's not my place to label another individual, especially not by name, say that you are a X, you are a X, Y, Z. You are a label. You are this label. You are that label. It's not my place. I can't do that. That's the magisterium's job. Magisterium's job is to label a particular proposition to be erroneous or heretical or temerious or whatever. That's their job. Let them do it. It's not your job. And it, I mean, it's certainly not some YouTuber, you know, or or whoever else. Uh, you know, there is an actual procedure that our Lord gave as, as again, Paleocrat. Uh, I've referenced him a few times about the enthusiastic cult. I should give him credit where it's due. He's the one who's really... You know, as a former sede, he's really brought out this enthusiastic aspect of the set of incontism. But I, I think that there is a, an enthusiasm on the other side, too. There's an, sort of an enthusiastic cult on the other side of the coin where Catholics want to label each other against charity. It's just not your job to label other Catholics. If you really are concerned that your brother in Christ is a heretic or is a schismatic or a dissenter or whatever label, if you're really concerned about that, our Lord gave you a procedure. Go to him privately, talk to him. If he doesn't listen, bring the brethren. And if he doesn't listen to, to y'all, tell the church. So then you go to the authority at that point. There's a procedure for that. Don't go denouncing all of your fellow Catholics, labeling them, detracting them. That's just, this is not a Catholic attitude. We need to have charity. Charity is above all. Charity Ever, charity is is the greatest faith, hope, and charity. But the greatest of these is charity. Um, I think the the main thing I want to say here is that Saint James says, "Judgment without mercy to him who shows no mercy." Judgment without mercy to him who shows no mercy. Do you really want a judgment from God without mercy? If you really want that, then you need to sh extend to your brother some mercy. Stop judging your brother and show him some mercy. There is a very severe judgment awaiting us who judge our brother harshly. So that is my, oh, I, I should, I should add this too. I, I, uh, <laughs> that's my soapbox. Um, but I wanted to add this. There's, I have a mea culpa to say publicly as, as we close this public portion of the stream done. I, I was definitely guilty of a mea culpa on this very ground because I saw the video of the, um, the appeared to be a married couple who were denied Holy Communion kneeling on the tongue at the funeral mass. And I tweeted something out uh, and uh, I, I was guilty of rash judgment. I, I just watched a video and I, I denounced the priest, but it's not my, it's not my place. I, I shouldn't have done that because who knows, was there some kind of situation? Was that a notorious heretic who should have been denied communion? I don't know. What do I know? I don't know. I just saw a video that and no context or anything like that. And I, I was guilty of rash judgment. So I, I said that and I, I regretted it and I deleted that tweet. So that's my mea culpa. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, God forgive me. I'm going to, I'll mention that in confession the next time I go, because that was a sin on my part. And that that's me not, um, not, uh, living up to my own ideals here. So, um, I, I need pr your prayers too. Cause I, I'm in this situation as, as, uh, St. James says in another place, teachers will be judged more harshly. So I'm going to be judged more harshly because I'm setting myself up as a teacher here. So um, with that, I, I ask for your prayers. And if you want to talk more about all these other topics, you can become a guild member. Um, and part of the guild is actually offering daily prayers for this whole apostolate. Uh, so we evoke, invoke our patrons uh, who are Our Lady of Victory, Mary Queen of the Home, St. Joseph Terror of Demons, and St. Anthony of the Desert. So that's all we have for the public portion. Let me mark the time. 